Hello learners, I am Manorama Tripathi from Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. I welcome you to this LIS program of NIOS. As you may recall that last time I talked about the various types of documents which libraries procure, organize and manage for the users. This time I will dwell upon five laws of library science. As you know, Dr. Ranganathan is father of library science. He gave very many seminal contributions which are considered very influential in the field of library science and five laws of library science is one of them. So today we will be focusing on five laws of library science. Learners, first of all, it's very important for all of you to know what does this word laws mean. Laws means a set of rules which govern what we should do and should not do. Laws, they are a set of rules or regulations which must be followed by a community or by the people of a particular profession. Laws, in fact, govern the actions or activities of the community or group of people. The five laws of library science are the most important concept in the field of library science. They are fundamental and they discuss the basic philosophy on which the very field of library science is based. They concisely represent the ideal services and organizational philosophy of all types of libraries even today. These laws provide scientific basis and general principles. These principles serve as guidelines to librarians in organizing and managing information products and services. So the basic crux or the main message over here is that the five laws of library science, they serve as guidelines, they serve as rules and regulations for the library professionals, for the libraries to introduce different services and follow. So five laws of library science are, as you can see on screen, books are for use, every reader his book, every book its reader, save the time of the reader, library is a growing organism. We are going to talk of these laws one by one. First one is books for use. Learners, earlier as you know, books were meant not to be used. Libraries were considered at storehouses of books. Books were kept in safe custody. They were rather chained with shelves and the general public did not have access to books. Only a select few or the elite classes of the society had access to the books. Gradually with passage of time, rather after post-industrial society, the concept changed and books are for use. This importance, the relevance of this concept came into existence. Library is now regarded as a service institution whose primary objective is to serve the social information needs of its users. Earlier, emphasis was on, con on conservation or preservation or storage of books. The institutions earlier were merely concerned with preserving the careers of knowledge, doc various documents for posterity. By emphasizing on the use of books, the first law dwells on access related issues such as location, building, library hours, book selection, and library staff. Implications or effects of the first law, library location. Library location, it means that library should be centrally located. For example, if it is a university library, then it should be centrally located, which means that it should be accessible. Users should be able to reach the library within no time. Time should not act as an impediment. For example, if it is a public library, then it means that it should be centrally located. It should be well connected by road or by metro rail. And other, it's, it should also, since it's a public library, it should also have branch libraries in different parts of the city so that visitors, users, or citizens can easily walk in without wasting any time. That means distance or commute should not serve as an impediment in visiting the library and using its resources. 
library timings. Another important factor is hours of operation. Libraries should be kept open for longer hours so that users or learners can walk in and use the resources as per their convenience. Office goers should be open. Libraries should be kept open for long hours. That means it should also be kept open beyond office hours so that people who go to office or the students or the citizens who do not have time to use library during the daytime or during the office hours may visit library beyond office hours. So the message over here is that library should be kept open for longer hours so that people can walk in and use the resources as per their convenience. They should also be kept open for longer hours on Sundays, during holidays and weekends. Library furniture, as you can see on the screen, library furniture should be comfortable so that users can sit for longer hours and concentrate on their work. You can see on the screen the book racks. The message over here is that there should be enough space between the racks so that users can walk around, can move around and browse the books which are shelved in the racks. As you can see on the screen, the furniture should be comfortable, the reading room should be well lit and the atmosphere should appear, should be appealing in nature so that more and more readers are drawn towards the reading halls and they are tempted to sit for longer hours and study. You can see on the screen that there is, why there is enough space for the users to walk in, to move around and browse the books. And this is very important. And height of the racks should be normal so that readers may stand on floor and retrieve books from the top shelf. In any library, book selection activity has tremendous importance. It has to be done, it should be done in a judicious manner. Generally in libraries, there is a committee which decides on different books which have to be procured for libraries. For example, school library should have books to support course book, course main syllabus which is being taught. It should have fiction as well as non-fiction books, books on journal knowledge which may help students. Then college and university libraries should have books related to courses and programs which are being offered. The collection should also have related reference books, newspapers and magazines. Then book selection is equally important in public libraries. Public libraries should have collections on local culture, heritage, newspapers and magazines. Balanced collection is required for all libraries. It means collection across various fields should be procured and maintained for the users. As you can see on the screen, library staff or staff which serve people who serve or personnel who serve in libraries, they are very important. They should be well qualified, professionally trained to extend services, to offer services to the users. They should have good interpersonal and social skills, should be prepared to interact with the users should be prepared to take criticism, for example, they should be prepared, they should be in a position to accept criticism or feedback from the people. They should be prepared to change, to modify services in keeping with the suggestions or feedback which, which the users or the visitors offer. Then first law also has an implication on library building. Library building should have a universal design Universal design means that people with a broad range of abilities and disabilities should be able to access the library and use its resources. The users may have learning disabilities and visual, speech, hearing and mobility impairments. So libraries should be able, should be in a position, the buildings should be made in such a manner that it is able to provide equitable access to all irrespective of any disability which a user may have. Libraries should be accessible to physically handicapped people. So entrance should have slopes or ramps in order to facilitate physically handicapped people so that they can easily enter the building and use the resources. The insides of the building should also be constructed 
in such a manner so uh, uh, so that uh, people with physical disability are in a position to freely move around now we will talk about second law which is every reader his book implications of second law the state library authority library staff the readers the second law emphasizes it stresses that all the readers should have access to the books as per their needs and expectations they should get book or information as per their need libraries have to provide equitable access to information to all even the visually blind the ones who cannot read they should get books of their need in alternate format alternate format means people who cannot read print books the library should strive should offer them books in alternate format either in braille or in audio files or in digital files library should deploy assistive technologies to help the people with different disabilities as you can see on the screen assistive technology it is any device equipment or service which improves the learning and capabilities of students with disabilities the second law also has an obligation has also an implication on the state it is the responsibility of state to set up library systems across the country and maintain them in proper running conditions the state has some obligations the first and the foremost is the library legislation library legislation has tremendous importance through library legislation the state can create the public library system in different areas it can decide upon how the libraries have to be run and maintained for example it can make adequate provisions for library cess it can decide upon the percentage of the cess which should be collected from the people and grants which should be given by the government for maintaining the library system legislation leads to cooperation between libraries in a state and integrates them with central library of the state then second law also has an impact on the library authority according to second law choice of books has to be done in a very judicious manner by the libraries library should be according to second law libraries have to be very careful very prudent in selecting books for their collections selection of books has to be done as per needs of the users library authority should strive to maintain a balanced collection balanced collection means the collection should include books across all the fields of universe of knowledge and another important thing which library authorities should always keep in mind is user suggestion or feedback from the users user survey is very important for procuring and developing a balanced collection it also implies that library should survey the users needs they should survey the user what the users want from time to time and these surveys provide feedback and library should customize or modify their collections or services in keeping with the suggestions which the users offer the second law which is every reader his or book has an implication on library authority since careful selection of books is not an ultimate aim of library libraries strive libraries aim at ensuring optimum utilization of resources and for that they need to deploy they need to have qualified professionally qualified and well trained staff well trained staff acts as an intermediary between the collection of the books and users so the message over here is that all possible efforts should be taken to recruit well qualified and well trained staff to ensure and what does it ensure this well trained staff when well trained staff is deployed or when well trained staff is appointed or when well trained staff is recruited then it ensures that users needs are taken care of the well trained staff also ensures that books are used to the maximum which is the ultimate aim of any library providing reading material is not the only duty of the library staff but staff must ensure that readers get the material of their interest and need the staff should try to know the readers the staff must try to 
interact with the readers. They must know what are their requirements, what do they need. Besides this, the library staff should be well familiar with the collections or the services which they have. They should be well familiar with different resources, with different reference resources which are available in library. Staff should also have disability equality training. They will interact in case they have this training, they will interact more effectively with people who have disabilities because the ultimate of the aim of the library is to provide equitable access to information to one and all. Staff should keep themselves up to date with latest resources and developments. The second law puts another obligation on the library staff that is to provide bibliographical indexing, abstracting and other services to the users. It's very important for library staff to keep themselves updated. They should know what are the abstracting and indexing services available in online form. See, if they do not know, if they are ignorant, then they will not be able to serve their users in an effective manner. Now, after staff, the second law has an impact on the readers as well. The second law imposes certain obligations on the readers towards library. It is the duty of the reader to follow the rules and regulations of the library in order to use and utilize library resources in an effective and efficient manner. Readers should not damage or vandalize books or library property. It has been observed that readers usually hide books. Readers should not damage or vandalize books or library property. Readers should not hide books. It has been observed that readers resort to this practice of hiding books. So what happens when others need book, they are hardly traceable. Now we will focus on third law, which says every book its reader. Implications of third law, open access, self-arrangement, easy access, catalog, publicity, display of books. Third law emphasizes that every book should get a reader. It means that no collection, no book in a collection in a library should remain unused. Since libraries are spending, usually libraries spend huge amounts of money in procuring, organizing, and maintaining collections. So if the books, if the collections are not used adequately, that the very purpose of procuring, organizing, and maintaining books is defeated. So in order to ensure that every book gets its reader, in order to ensure that books are used to the maximum, open access should be followed. Books should be kept in open access and users must be allowed to walk and move around the shelves. When they walk around, they come across many new books they did not know before coming to library. Then another point is that of shelf arrangement. There is need to arrange the books and shelves in classified sequence based on their thought content. This arrangement brings books on the same subject together for easy browsing. If the shelf area is provided with well-advised guides and labels, the use of each book may increase. Self-rectification should be done at regular orders so that books are in their correct positions as per their call numbers. Then the height of the racks should not be more than average height of the reader. That is, the topmost shelf of a book rack should be within easy reach of a person of average height. Third law, which is every book its reader, it also requires that catalog should be updated. All entries about the new arrivals should be added timely. Web pack should be up and running all the time. Publicity and promotion of collections is very important. In order to ensure that each and every book which is acquired, which is procured by the library is used, the libraries must resort to publicity or to promotion of its collections. The users must be informed about new books and the documents through emails. Nowadays, libraries advocate or disseminate information about new books through social media too because users these days, students are actively using different social media like Facebook and Twitter. 
and libraries are resorting to the use of these media. They are promoting their collections. They are disseminating the information about the new books which they procure by announcing their arrivals through these social media. Then new arrival of books. Libraries also resort, the libraries display the new books which arrive or which are acquired and added to the collections. The new books which arrive in the library, they are processed and they are kept at the entrance area so that when users or when visitors enter the library, they come to know there are some new books, they may browse them, they may see them. So this display of new arrivals enhances the chance of every book to find its reader. Now learners, we will be talking about fourth law, which is save the time of the readers. Now we will be focusing on fourth law, which is save the time of reader. Implications or effects of fourth law, classified arrangement, open access, reference services, circulation, issue return method, centralized prenatal cataloging, stack room guides and library location. The classified arrangement of books in the stack room saves the time of reader as it is easy for a reader to find all books in the same subject arranged at one place for browsing. The arrangement of entries in the catalog cabinet in classified manner also helps the readers to select the books easily from the respective shelves. And the fourth law also provides, also supports, also advocates that proper reference services should be provided. The staff providing reference service should be well qualified. The staff should be well aware of the collection and services which library offers. The staff should be welcoming, friendly and professional with good social and interpersonal skills. The staff providing reference services should also have good listening and communication skills. Nowadays, libraries provide reference services through different media like call, emails, text and chat. In order to save the time of readers, libraries should ensure that there are no queues in while serving the users. For example, at circulation system when books are issued and returned to the users, the library should ensure that there are no queues. So for that, some of the libraries have introduced self-issue return counters where users can walk in and they can by themselves issue and return the books. This way their precious time is saved. Centralized and prenatal cataloging. It advocates, the fourth law advocates prenatal centralized cataloging and classification. It emphasizes the libraries to evolve a uniform cataloging code for international cooperative cataloging. It also supports the centralized documentation work at international level to save time, money and manpower. Though you can see on the screen stack room guides. So if the stack rooms are well arranged, stacks are well arranged, shelves are well arranged and there are sufficient guides, then this will also help in saving the precious time of the readers. The location of library should be in such a manner that users don't have to waste, don't have to invest time in commuting. The fourth law also has an impact on library location. That means the library should be located in a place where it is easily accessible, it is easily reachable by the users, by the visitors, so that they don't have to waste their time in commute. It should be accessible as well, accessible as you know in one of the earlier slides, I focused accessible means that the building should have ramps and slopes with so that the people who are physically challenged can use wheelchairs to reach. Now we will be talking about the fifth law which says library is a growing organism and it has the implications on growth in size, library building, growth of readers, growth of staff. As an organism grows, similarly library also grows. It grows in terms of collection because with passage of time more and more collection is acquired. With passage of time more and more visitors, more and more students, more and more users join in and there is increase in number of staff as well to serve the users and to maintain the collections. Library includes books, 
readers, staff, physical and computing infrastructure. It means that library grows in terms of staff, collection and users. So there should be provision to accommodate new collections, increasing number of visitors. The design of the building should be modular so that it may be expanded as in when required. The scheme of classification which is revised and updated regularly should be used. It will help in assigning call numbers to the new and emerging subjects. Then another thing which should be regularly done is weeding out. Weeding out should be done at regular intervals. Weeding out means removing from the collection the documents which are torn, completely damaged, obsolete, no longer in use. Such items occupy spacious space on the shelves. These need to be removed. This makes, once weeding out has been done, it makes the collection more visible. Learners, we just now talked about the five laws of library science. And then later on, many other experts of library science modified and built upon these five laws in different contexts. As you can see on the screen, the different experts modified, built upon these basic five laws. But the crux of all these versions is that books or information contained in them is for use. Library should provide books or information as per the needs and expectations of their users. Library should also ensure optimum utilization of these resources or books since they spent huge amount of money in procuring them. Right books or right information should be provided to the users without wasting any time. Learners, in a recap, we talked about these five laws of library science serve as a guide to the librarians in policy making, programming at every stage. These are universally accepted as fundamental laws for all kinds of libraries. Learners, I hope that you have understood the five laws of library science. Thank you very much for watching this video. 